Hello, Sarah, Tracy, Rishu, and I decided to visit the Kuri Heritage Trust building. Here is the land, here is the sky, here are my friends, and here are mine. We would like to acknowledge the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples, they connect, uh, recognizing their connections to country as the custodians of the land and water of which we learn, teach, and work. We pay respects to the First Nation cultures and to the elders, past and present. Here. The trust was established by John Merkel in 1985. The establishment was made in partnership with Aboriginal elders and Kuri people. The first purpose of the trust was to fight the illegal sale of Aboriginal relics and artifacts. The Kuri Heritage Trust includes shields, spears, and clubs, predating the colonization of Australia. Collected, this became the Kuri Collection. The facility aimed to create an outlet for local Aboriginal community members, foster continuing development of meaningful understanding of Aboriginal culture, history, and education. Before to the centre of Melbourne in the CBD, the real heart of art and culture, developing into a beautiful space we know today at Federation Square. They also sought out to utilise the connection with the Yarra River, known to the Wondery people as the Burunang. The trust um, built up artefacts and history along the way. Taking this into the Federation Square, a purpose-built facility that holds a diverse collection, rooms for education, shops, supported and driven by the Aboriginal people. The architect for creating the space spoke passionately about how the intention was to create an environment that gave agency and empowered Aboriginal people. Something unique we reflected on was the very immersive and inclusive service of the walking tours. Lots of things that if you want to have an uh, excursion with the children, bring them in, like, like, and then you start to like, actually touch, feel, interacting with the entire team. Touching of these ones, though. It's got information on the ground. Are you okay? Definitely the right place to come for an explosion. Some more art here. Artifacts they do. They also do tools. Um, but downstairs it's got like a bit of stuff. You can purchase some of those books. So we've got some of the past. Oh, I do their country and their beliefs and their elders and ancestors. So, is there a couple of solutions, as we said? I found very interesting, besides what Tracy said about the resources that were created. I include a lot of educational resources. Like uh, some books for different stages of development. So, for example, this one is amazing for a little one, the sensory motor stage, and actually support children's development while engaging them in Indigenous curriculum as well and teaching them about the history of the land. Yeah, there's some classes that we need to 
does um, uh, and this event is decoration and stuff for me, like um, cushions, balsam, glass for the rooms for your classrooms. Uh, then we decided to have a talk. Hi. Hi, everyone. Hi. Hi. Okay, so we decided to go to the Koori Heritage Trust building in Federation Square. Um, and we all went and had a look to see what it offers. Um, Fabiola, what did you think with your experience when you went there? Well, I went a couple of times, actually. The first time I went with my children, my own children. Um, it yep. was an audition. We went around. We, we felt really welcome in that space. It was mm -hmm. not, was, um, you know, sometimes you go into a museum or into a shop and then the salespeople are harassing you or are talking to you or following you around. I felt like it was a very free place for children and for people in general. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I think we only had like one person came up and just said, did you need a hand with anything or can we show you anything? And otherwise it was just like, we'll be around. If you need us, come and get us. Yeah, I yeah. have one question. Yeah, they were, they were really nice. Mm -hmm. I have one question. Did you find something like different? Because I heard that there's a like different signs for everyone, like uh, even for the like the books and for the toilet, for the it is a different science as well like in that uh, area over there have you seen that as well and it's the language on the on the, the language yeah 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 yeah, yeah. That's great. yeah. what I, about you sarah i found it really warm like going on the note that you spoke about just before i felt it really warm to walk into and calming which was really nice um and i really enjoyed just looking at the art, which really drew me in at the start was a beautiful art piece that was, you know, got bright, it has bright colours. It wasn't just dot painting, it was, you know, different forms of Aboriginal art uh, within the painting and it just was animals and landscape and it spoke about in the blurb, in the painting, about how the Aboriginal people can, you know, they can see when the trees uh you know are gonna bloom and how long for and you know the animals you know there's all this connection they have the they can understand the the environment around them and the picture was so beautiful so it was really nice to see that as well and just walking around in the calm space and being able to touch a few things and looking at a few things um yeah it was just lovely yeah I felt like I learned a lot and had that time and space to to take it in and all of the in, yeah. purposeful, which was really nice. Yeah. It's amazing. You know, they did have a really, yeah. really nice artwork. Mm. And it's amazing that you mentioned that about how the Aboriginal people really connect to country. And that's that's something that I have learned in this in these sessions, that, that connection to country. And you mentioned that you saw mm. that artwork as well. Yeah, definitely. And the things that they had in the shop that you could buy, like I could have gotten carried away. <laughs> Lots of things for the yeah. children to look at, like the puzzles in there. I think it, I can't remember what it was. Um, yeah, I can't remember, but it was like a that red one with the black around it. It was an animal. I can't remember what animal it was, but... Like, just the puzzle was just absolutely beautiful. I would have, yeah, I could have bought quite a few things there. So I just refrained myself. I bought a couple of books um, and I have read them to the children at work. And, yeah, so we set up an activity to relate to one of the books. So it was about the footprints that the animals leave um, and we did like a, an animal yarning circle. So we just painted on some white paper, um, the circle for the yarn, um, and then the kids just came and drew 
they chose an animal that they wanted to be out of the book and then they did their footprints and they made up like a little yarning circle on the paper around and it was yeah, yeah. really really that's cute awesome. and then awesome. I let them draw on the floor. That sounds so nice. I'm just picturing it, actually, Tracy. That's, yeah. that's lovely. Did you yeah, just the... talk and yarn while you did your artwork? Yeah, well, I sat back um, and just listened to what they were talking about and they were actually discussing, like, how the snake was just, like, a squiggly line but the lizard, like, was a squiggly line but it had the two feet and then, you know, they were talking how snakes don't have legs that's why I didn't have the feet and like the conversations were really really good and then I think there was a couple that they found a little bit tricky to try and do but they still gave it a go but they really yeah they really engaged in it it was quite cute yeah so the book it's a really nice book really nice pictures and stuff so I'm yeah I'm keeping that out for them to go and have a look if they want to go back and keep going with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I also find out that they do workshops for children. So if you if your service is close by to to the Korea Heritage Building, which is very accessible, it's just in there in Federation Square. The yeah. the day that we that Tracy and I went, they were running a flower making workshop. Yeah. And it was very nice to see all these children there learning from the Aboriginal techniques, how they were sewing on mm. fabric. Yeah. Yeah, and so they do, they done. run quite a few. The weaving, yeah. yeah. They just sort of weaving mm-hmm. and all kind of painting. Yeah. What else is fantastic? Uh, within my research, I found that they do um, education for educators as well and just community members who want to learn about the culture, um, that particular culture or just culture in general. So they'll do workshops, um uh, come to the uh, the workplace or they'll host them there. Um, you can book those. It's very easy to book as well and very flexible. And you'd sure you get some amazing information. I would love to. I'd be very blessed if I could have one with my um, my peers as well, yeah. Yeah, that would be good. They do. They actually offer yeah. quite a few things. And I found that their website too was really easy to manoeuvre, like to get through mm-hmm. and look things up and, yeah, really easy. For yeah, it was relevant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was relevant and, and current to, to the times. It was, yeah. not, you know, sometimes you enter some websites and it dates from 2021. So this one is, is actually up to date. It was Yeah, great. it was. Yeah. And it'd be good when they finish it too. Like I think there was still another floor that they were working on mm-hmm. yeah so yeah. it would be eventually be three floors I think it was yeah. yes yeah but well, it'll be quite big which will be amazing like if you had a service quite close and taking the children there and being able to explore even yeah just even not booking a tour but taking you know co-workers there and exploring or as what you did that be all and taking your children there you know building that mm. connection is so so important um and I did you get to speak to anyone there? Uh yeah. Well, well I, I actually when I went with Tracy, we got to speak to more people than I did when I went the first time. The first time I just went, had a look around, bought a couple of books as well. But when I went with Tracy, we actually got to connect to the people that was in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How do you how do you feel about that, Tracy? Yeah, no, they were good and they were really helpful too, because we were talking I think it was the guy behind the counter about um, doing our acknowledgement of country and he gave us a few ideas and stuff. So, yeah, he was quite helpful too. But, yeah, it's a really nice space. And I loved upstairs that um, that you get to touch. Oh, well, I hope you can because we were touching it. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like getting to feel things and pick them up and stuff. Um yeah, I suppose we could because there's other things that are in a drawer that you can't touch. So, yeah, and it'd be good so to take the Don't you think it's so inclusive for the children and um, everyone learns through touch and seeing things is fantastic. Exactly. But also being able to touch it and feel touch it, it, it builds that connectedness that I feel like the Aboriginal um, 
people you know they value so much as well yeah yeah definitely and that's what I'm taking away from this as well is the amazing connection yeah to land that they have is yeah it's awesome I don't know. Well, we thought it was very sensible for the children to have a play experience related to art because the Cory Heritage Trust building sets the art as a mean of expression as well, probably expressing happiness, anger, sadness, all these feelings. So we got these books from the shop. They're from the John Strong Sister. And we found this black and white book, which particularly aligned with my program. I am room leader of a zero to two year old group. So I decided to buy this book and to present it to the children we were experiencing before with black and white. As I have noticed, sometimes the colors can draw the, um, the attention from children on their purpose of what they're doing. I'm not saying it's bad to have colors or anything, I just say when they focus on black and white, they are probably more intentional about their hand movements. And we're talking about a zero to two years old. And that was what we were trying to to investigate how the children will act. So this book came in perfectly. And we tried to incorporate with this book some of the eight of original ways of learning. And the black and white book was set up at the table with some white crayons and black paper. Soon the children approached curiously the table in their own time. So it was set up there in the middle of the day. We randomly, children came in the table, they observed, they manipulated the resources. Some of them began drawing. So as the children were crowded, crowding the table, they were redirected, sat, sat around the table and they began drawing just to make it safer. Began drawing while an educator showed them the illustrations and sharing stories related to the illustrations and the animals. Even some educators began yarning amongst themselves about their encounters with bush animals while children were drawing, like at camping or in the beach. And they talked about symbols as well. Look at the kangaroo print. Have you ever seen a kangaroo print? Why do they look like that? So the book also had a little bit of language. It called the children Bob up at the start. So an education mentioned the word bubble and children repeated. So I so children enjoy drawing and observing the book. So the interest was extended. So we didn't want it to be a linear thing. We put some new resources and we wanted it to be on their own time as well. So what we do to, to continue with this, we stuck some paper to the table and added the crayons and charcoal, black and white again. While we had some original toys in our center. We have a magpie, which is black and white as well. And we added also some sensory elements like eucalyptus leaves, a real nest that our kinders found in the bush kinder. And we also added another book that we found in the Curry Heritage Trust building, this one with numbers and counting, to continue extending their learning. There are some children that have interest in numbers already. So with this sensory element, there was the eucalyptus leaves and the nest and some conversation, we tried to connect children to country. So children manipulated the leaves, they were smelling them and guided by the educators, there was a bit of a construction and the construction as well. So children then continued drawing and showing pride on their creation. So we decided to share it with our community and make an art gallery with the children's creations. So in our visit to the Curry Heritage Trust building, there, there was an exhibition from Iluka Sax William, which is an Aboriginal artist. He had a quote referring to Marams. The group in which this play experience was planned was for the Marams group. It was named in consultation with our own Jerry Elder when the center was redesigned on the Pentridge Prison grounds. So this is a very important place. And I would like to, to speak about it a little bit later. The phrase was added to our gallery, acknowledging and giving some credits to the author and the exhibition, of course. And 
The quote said something like this, Marim is the great kangaroo. He travels his country trail, strong across many terrains and deep into elemental environments. And during his Jananinon travels, he watches the band, water, and big country change over time. He watches the animals, the cooling people, and their visitors over time. One thing that never changes is the strong, deep sense of country that binds us all. We thought it was very inspiring and we added to the exhibition. So I was talking about this center being in the Pentridge prison grounds. So we would like to take a minute to reflect on what this prison and the prison system in Australia, the unfairness, racism, biases have represented for the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders people. We will endeavor from here, and I can speak about my colleagues as well, that we will teach our children paths and knowledge for reconciliation and the colonization. Thank you. In conclusion, Curry Heritage has delivered greater awareness, understanding and appreciation of the culture, their exhibition, cultural activities, and well, we hope you liked it. Thanks. <laughs>